Hi, it's AZ AstroGuy. Lunt makes a full line of hydrogen alpha solar telescopes. I've just purchased the Lunt 40 millimeter F10 solar telescope, which is the lowest end model in the series. I'm going to take a look at it today and we'll do some testing and we'll see how it compares to the 100 millimeter model that I also have. Let's get started. So here's how it arrives. We're going to be opening it together here. Got a box in a box. It's well protected. Making sure nothing else is in here. All right, that seems to be all there is there. So now we have the next box. All right. Let's have a look at what we got here. Foam padding. We've got uh, operator's manual. And a product card. And this is how it looks. So the telescope looks like it's already pre-assembled. We have the main telescope, the Edelon, the 40 millimeter. We have the B500 blocking filter and the helical focuser. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to put this on a mount and we're going to see how it does on the sun. Let's have a look. I wanted to provide some guidance for people who are interested in hydrogen alpha solar viewing, but were daunted by the price of wider aperture, more advanced telescopes. I bought this at retail with my own money and Lunt does not have any influence on the content of this review. Before I go any farther, I'd like to ask you to click on the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. It really helps me with the algorithm and makes it possible for me to do what I do. If you're looking at entry-level hydrogen alpha solar telescopes, most popular options are this Lunt 40 millimeter F10 hydrogen alpha telescope, the Coronado PST, which is also an F10 40 millimeter telescope, and the Quark Chromosphere from Daystar. That does not include a telescope. The first two are directly comparable. I don't own a PST, but I've looked through them many times. In my opinion, the Lunt 40 millimeter is a superior instrument and provides a much more pleasing image. Here's a comparison of my image I took with the Lunt 40 millimeter and an image supplied by Mead from their PST. My processing was done inverted to provide more contrast. But regardless, from these two examples at least, the Lunt is the clear winner. The Quark is about 50% more expensive and requires a separate telescope, sun finder, and eyepiece that you must supply yourself. If you already have a small refractor, a Quark is something to consider. Some of them can produce incredible images when paired with the right telescope. I encourage you though to review Cloudy Night's solar forums and I think you'll see user reports suggest that some quarks can be outstanding performers, but other ones can be terrible duds. One of the reasons I didn't buy a quark was my concern about their inconsistent quality. Here are my first impressions of the Lunt 40 millimeter. It's very light, well-made, good fit and finish. The integrated sun finder is very helpful and was exactly aligned the first time I used it. It also has a Vixen dovetail included. So you'll see with this telescope, you have a tilt tuner etalon. So this is how you adjust for hydrogen alpha. And tilt tuners are good if they're placed near the objective. Uh, air face tuners are better if they're placed inside the telescope, more efficient. You also see you have got a sole sun finder, which worked very well. And then here's the uh, helical focuser. There's not a tremendous amount of travel with the helical focuser. But what you can do is loosen uh, this screw on the back and then this will slide out a tremendous distance, giving you a lot more tuning travel. And that's what I had to do. I had to have this extended almost all the way out for the eyepiece and I got a great focus. But then when I put the camera on, I had to push it almost all the way back in again. So there it is. There's the 40 millimeter Lunt F10 hydrogen alpha telescope. Let's check out its performance. After I got it centered and dialed in the focus, I said, holy crap, this little scope punches well above its weight. 
I had moderate expectations and they were clearly exceeded. LUNT makes eyepieces for this scope optional, so I used my Teleview 18.2 mm Delight eyepiece, which provided a nice full disc view filling most of the field. The visual view with my eyepiece was very similar to the photos I'm showing you. LUNT sells an optional zoom eyepiece you could also consider for visual work. The helical focuser works, but having been used to both coarse and fine focus with my other telescopes, it was a bit trickier to nail down the exact focus. Helical focusers are less expensive, which helps keep the cost down, but they're not as easy to focus as a rack and pinion or feather touch. If you look at this image, you can clearly make out numerous prominences along the limb, sunspots, filaments, and other active detail. I noticed that the image brightness was very uniform, which you don't always see with viewing the sun. So how does this little LUNT-40 compare to my LUNT-100 millimeter universal double stacked hydrogen alpha telescope? It's $749 versus $8,426. What are you getting on the big scope for 11 times the price? First of all, you've got a 100 millimeter aperture. It's a apochromatic telescope, which can be used for hydrogen alpha viewing of the sun, white light viewing of the sun, planetary, and nighttime use on stars, galaxies, and nebula. This really covers all the bases, whereas the LUNT-40 is dedicated only to hydrogen alpha viewing. Second, the 100 millimeter is a double stack design, which means you get far higher surface detail than a single stack system like the LUNT-40. Third, it's got a rack and pinion focuser with coarse and fine focus. It's really an outstanding system and I've reviewed it before on this channel. A link is provided in the notes. A casual glance at the full disc view suggests the little lunt is hanging in there compared to the 100 millimeter, although the discerning eye will quickly show that the 100 millimeter image shows much more surface detail and higher resolution. There also are more prominences visible along the limb with 100 millimeter, and they're shown in more detail. I then added a Teleview 2.5x Barlow in the system, raising the little lunt to f25 and the big lunt to f17.5. Here, the 40 millimeter still shows reasonable pictures, but they are far outclassed by the 100 millimeter. Zooming in on the sunspot region really highlights the superiority of the larger aperture instrument. So in a nutshell, I'm impressed with this little scope. There's nothing like viewing the sun on hydrogen alpha, and in my opinion, this is the best budget-friendly way to do it. I put a link to both the 40 millimeter and 100 millimeter scopes in the notes. Thanks for watching.